So I would like to discuss <coughs> have a dialogue about something which we were talking about the other day. We have cultivated a mind that can solve almost any technological problems. And apparently human problems have never been solved. Human beings are drowned by their problems. Yeah. Problems of communication, problems of knowledge, problems of relationship, problems of heaven and hell. You know, the whole human existence has become a vast, complex problem. And apparently, throughout history, it has been like this. Mm. <coughs> Man. <coughs> in spite of his knowledge, in spite of his s centuries of evolution, he has never been free of problems. Yes, well, really, of insoluble problems. Mm -hmm. I would add, of insoluble problems. In, there are, I question if human problems are are insoluble. Well, I mean, as they are put now. As they are, of course, now. Now the, these problems have become so complex and so incredibly insoluble, as things are. Yeah. No politician or scientist or philosopher is going to solve them, except through wars. Even none of them can solve them, yeah. of course. So why has the mind of human beings throughout the world have not been able to resolve human daily problems of, of life. What is the, what is the, what are the things that prevent the solution of these problems completely? Is it that we have never turned our minds to it? Because we, we spend all our days and probably half the night in thinking and about technological problems, and we have no time for the other. Well, that's only part of it. I mean, it's clear many people feel that the other should take care of itself. I mean, that I think many people don't give a lot of attention to these problems. But Why? Right. Why? I mean, it's, it's I'm being, can, I'm, I'm rather concerned about this, because in a school like this, or with all the people we talk to, the, the human problems remain constant. And I'm questioning, asking in this dialogue whether it is possible to have no problems at all, human problems, mm -hmm. apart from technological problems, that can be solved. But human problems seems insoluble. Why? Is it our education? Is it our deep-rooted tradition that we accept things as they are. Yes, well, that's uh, certainly part of it. Uh, uh, these problems accumulate, you know, as civilization gets older, that people keep on accepting things and uh, which make problems. Uh, say, for example, uh, there are now far more nations in the world than there used to be, and uh, each one <laughs> creates new problems. Uh, of course. Well, if you go back a certain period of time... I mean, every little, uh, yeah. tribe becomes a nation. Yes, and then they must fight the neighbor for... Of course, of course. And they have this 
technolo- marvelous technology to kill each other. Mm. So that's. But I'm talking. We are talking about human problems, human problems of relationship, human problems of lack of freedom. This sense of constant uncertainty, fear, and all you know the human struggle and working for a livelihood for the rest of your life. It all seems so extraordinarily wrong, the whole thing. Yes, well, I think people have lost sight of that. You see, uh, generally speaking, that uh, they sort of, as you say, accept the situation as it is in which they find themselves and try to make the best of it, you know, uh, trying to solve some little problems to ameliorate their situation. Uh, Yes, but people wouldn't look at this whole big situation very seriously. But the religious people have created a tremendous problem for man. Yes, but they, they're trying to solve problems too. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, everybody is off on his own little fragment, solving whatever he thinks he can solve, and it all adds up to chaos. You see. Chaos. That's what I'm saying. We live in human as human beings. They're chaos. Now, what, as a, I want to find out <laughs> if I can live without a single problem for the rest of my life. Is that possible? Well, I wonder if we should even call these things problems. You see, uh, that, that a problem would, be, I mean, would be something that would have a reasonably uh, solvable. You see. Uh, if you put a problem of how to achieve a certain result, and then that presupposes that you could reasonably find a way to do it, right? Is that clear technologically? Now, I don't think we can even psychologically, the problem cannot be looked at that way, that uh, to propose a result that we have to achieve and then find a way to do it. I mean, what is the root of all this? Uh, what is the cause of all this human chaos? Yes, well, we've sort of been discussing this for a long time. Huh? We've been discussing this for a, a number of years. I, I'm trying to come to it from a different yeah. angle. Mm-hmm. This, whether there is an ending to problems. You see, personally, I refuse to have problems. Well, somebody might argue with you about that, saying, you know, you might, you can't refuse. You see, you may be challenged with something. It's not a problem. I was challenged the other day about something very, very serious. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a matter of clarification, then, you see, because part of the difficulty is clarification, clarification no. of the language, right? Not only language, but all that's behind it. Yes, not only language. It's a question of relationship Mm -hmm. and action. Yes. Certain certain problem arose the other day, which involved lots of people and so on. And certain action had to be taken. It was personally to me. It was not a problem. Well, we have to make it clear what you mean, because, you see, I don't know without an example. I mean by problem, something that has to be resolved, Mm -hmm. something you worry about, Mm -hmm. something you are endlessly concerned and questioning, answer, doubt, uncertain, and take some kind of action at the end of which you regret. Yeah, but let's begin with the technical problem where the idea first arose, you see, of a problem and saying, you know, you have a challenge, you can't, something sh- needs to be done. Absolutely. And you say that's a problem, you see. That's, yes, that, you that's see, generally it's called a problem. problem. Now, the word problem is based on the idea of putting forth something, a, a possible yes. solution, and then trying to achieve it. Right? Yeah. Or, or not, I have a problem, but I don't know how to deal with it. Well, that's second. Then, then if you have a problem and you have no idea of how to deal with it, yes. then I... <laughs> Than a so I go around asking people, getting more and more confused. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's hard to say that would be already a change from the simple idea of a technical problem, where you, you usually have some notion of what to do. I wonder if we do. Well, technical. Uh, technical problems are fairly simple. Well, they often require, they, become, make, they often bring challenges requiring you to, uh, uh, you know, to go very deeply and change your ideas. Yes, that's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, even a technical problem may do that. But now, you see, you're saying, a psycho um, see, if it were anything like a technical problem, either you would say, well, I can see it generally what I have to do to solve it. Say, if you say there's lack of food, generally what you've got to do is to produce more, food, more food and find ways and means of doing it. We can do that. Yes, so we say that, and also we could discover entirely new ideas and so on. Now then we say, now we have a psychological problem, can we do the same? Yes, that's the point. Yes, well, that's, that's the point. That, yes. How do we deal with this thing? Well, what kind of problem shall we discuss, for example? It's human problem. Human problem, what sort of problem is it? Any problem which arises in human relationship. Well, let's say people cannot agree. You see, they fight each other constantly. Yeah, let's take that for a very simple thing. <coughs> in our discussions here yeah. with a group of people, it seems to be almost, di almost impossible to think together, to, yeah. to have the same outlook, the same attitude, the, not uh, copying each other, but an attitude which, which seems so normal, healthy. And each person puts his opinion forward and is contradicted by another. And so this goes on mm. all the time, in the world and here. Yes. All right, so that's... And that, now we say we, our problem is to work together, to think together, yes. right? work together, to think together, to cooperate together without a monetary issue involved in it. Yes, well, that's another question that uh, people will work together if they're paid highly and so yeah, Of course, you can see that happening. But saying, given a situation where this is not what we want, yes. then we have a problem. Yes, that's right. Hmm. Now, how, how do we solve such a problem? Hmm. I, I offer my opinion, you offer and he and so on. All of us are offering an opinion. And so we don't meet each other at all. No. So what should, what should we do? And it seems almost impossible to give up on our opinions. Yes, well, that's one of the difficulties. You see, I don't think, if you say it's my problem to give up my opinions, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, that's what I was trying to say. I'm not sure we can regard it as a problem. You see, saying, well, what shall I do to give up my opinions? You <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. Uh, no, but that's a fact. Yeah. So, Observing that and seeing the necessity that we all should come together and when this is put forward to the others, it becomes a problem to them. Well, that's because people find it hard to give up opinions. That's right? it. Opinions, con preconceived yeah. ideas, their own experiences, their conclusions, their ideas, their be you know, all that. Or even it may not seem like an opinion, at that moment they feel it's they, true. They yeah. call it fact. Fact or truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, what shall we do? I mean, if you, are, if you see that it's important that human beings work together, for, not for some ideal, for some belief, or some god, or for some principle, but the importance of working, the, f the necessity of working together. I do yes. Well. I mean, I mean, the League of Na United Nations, they're not working together. No. Uh, in India, they're not working together. No, con no people in any country work, feel, or work together. Yes, well, you see, now some people might say we've got uh, 
not only opinions but self-interest and uh, self-interest, which is very similar, and, <laughs> and so on. All that, and it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Well, we make it, uh, it's called a problem. I mean, I think, you know, that, see, if two people have self-interest, which is different, then there's no way, to my view, that they can, as long as they maintain that, that they can work together. I agree. But what should we, suppose yeah. in a place like this, there are a group of people, <coughs> and it's important that we all work together. Yeah. Even in a small village, small uh, country, whatever, it is, we all must work together. And apparently that becomes almost incredibly difficult. Yes. Now, how do you, uh, uh, now how do you break into this? That's what I want to discuss. Yes, okay, let's discuss. If you point that out to me, that we must work together, and see that point, show to me the importance of it. And I also see it is important, but I can't do it. That's, that's the point, that, uh, that, uh, that it's not enough to even uh, see it's important and have the intention to do it. You see, uh, see, ordinarily when we say, I see the importance and I have the intention to do it, and but I hey, go and do it, you see, but I here it doesn't do come it. Right. Yeah. So there's a new factor coming in here that a person sees something as important, he intends to do it, and he can't do it. That's, that's it. And that creates a problem to him. Yes, and to everybody. Yes, to everybody. <laughs> but, but then why is it that we cannot carry out our intentions? You see, seeing the importance, knowing we want to do it, and yet can't do it. It seems puzzling. One can give many reasons for that, mm -hmm. but that those uh, causes and reasons and explanation doesn't solve the problem. No. Doesn't solve the issue. What will we come back to the same thing? What will make a human mind change? Seeing that it's necessary and yet incapable or unwilling to change. What factor is necessary in this? Some new factor is necessary. Yeah. Well, I feel it's a perception of uh, the ability to observe this, uh, whatever it is that is uh, holding the person, you know, preventing him from changing. So is the new factor attention? Yes, uh, uh, that's what I meant, uh, attention. That, but. Now, then, you see, if you're going to, say, break into this in a group of people, then uh, the, uh, what kind of attention do you mean? You see, this because people... You we can, can discuss uh, that. Discuss we can that. discuss what is attention. We yeah. can discuss that. Because it may have many meanings to do Yes, of course, that's obvious, as usual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as usual, um, so many opinions about attention. Mm -hmm. Could we, you and I, see what attention is? I feel as somebody wrote this morning, a letter came, in which the person says, where there is attention there is no problem. Where there is inattention, everything arises. Mm -hmm. Now, without making attention to a problem, what do we mean by that? So that I understand it. Yeah. Not verbally, not intellectually, but deeply, in my blood I understand the nature of attention in which no problem can ever exist. Obviously it's not concentration. Hmm? Yes, well we've gone into that, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've gone into that. Yes. 
Obviously, it is not an endeavour, an experience, a, a struggle to be attentive. But you show me the nature of attention, which is, when there is attention, there is no centre from which I attend. Yes, but that's a difficult thing to... Of course. Uh, don't let's make a problem of no, it. No, but I meant that we've been trying that you know, for a long time. But, uh, you see, I think uh, that there is, first of all, some difficulty about what is meant by attention, because the content of thought itself, when a person is looking at it, he may think he is attending, you see. That is, uh, no, in that state of attention, there is no thought. Yes, well, that's, that's really... But, but how do you stop thought, then, you see? That <laughs> the, uh, you see, while thinking is going on, there's an impression of attention, which is not attention, you see? That is, that is one thinks, one supposes that one is paying attention. Oh, no, no. <laughs> when one supposes when one is paying attention, it's not attention. No, but that's what often happens, you see. So how are we going to, what are we, how to communicate? What is the true meaning of attention? Or would you say, to find out what is attention, let, could we discuss what is inattention? Yes, good. Through negation, come to the positive. Yes. What is, when I'm inattentive, what takes place? When I'm inattentive, well, all sorts of things take place. But huh? I say all sorts of things take place. <laughs> <laughs> no, but much more than that. I want. Right. I mean, in my inattentiveness, if there is such word as inattentiveness, mm. I feel lonely, desperate, depressed anxious, yes, and so on. Yes, I understand that. The mind begins to break up and go into confusion. Going to fragmentation, fragmentation takes place. Yes. Or, in my uh, uh, lack of attention, I identify myself with so many other things. Yes, and it may also be pleasant. Of course, of course. It's always pleasant. Well, but it may be painful. Pain, but I find later on, that the, that which was pleasing yes. becomes pain. Pain, yes. So all that is a movement in where in which there is no attention, mm -hmm. right? Are we getting anywhere? I don't know. I think. I mean, I, I feel that attention is the real solution to all this. A mind that's really attentive, yes. which has understood the nature of inattention and moves away from it. Yes, now what is the nature of inattention? Nature of inattention. Yes. Indolence, negligence, the, the self-concern, the self-contradiction, all that is a nature of inattention. Yeah. But see, a person who has self-concern may feel that he is attending to his own, the concerns of himself, you see. <laughs> that is, this is one of the... See, he feels, I've got problems. I'm paying attention to them. Ah, I see you're using it quite, quite. If I have... If there is self-contradiction in me, and then I pay attention to it, mm -hmm. in order not to be self-contradictory, that's not attention. Yes, but it can make it clear, because ordinarily one might think that is attention. No, see. that's not. It's merely um, a process of thought which which says, I, must, I am this, I must, not be, I must be that. Yes, well, you're saying that this attempt to become is not attention. Yes. 
That's right. Because uh, that's right. Acted. Not based on that's it. Right. The the becoming psychological becoming breeds inattention. Yes, and the person is not may think he's attending to something, but he's not. I mean, when he's uh, engaged in this process. I mean, isn't it very difficult, sir, to be free of not becoming? That is the root of it, isn't it? To be free of what? Not becoming. To, to, to be end becoming. becoming. To become, yes. Does this convey anything? Come and join us. Are we getting anywhere, sir? Well, or are we going round and round in circles? See what you see, I, I have... Most human beings have problems of some kind or other. Hmm? Apart from technological problems, which can be solved, apparently human problems are not soluble. And I say, why? Well, we've just answered because they're not really paying any attention to that. No, no, but, but then paying attention becomes a problem. I know it does, but I'm saying there's no attention, and that is why these problems are there, right? <coughs> yes, and then you point that out, and it, and it becomes a problem. Yes, and now that's How the am I to, to be attentive? That, yes, that, that's the question to stop it. You see, that, that the difficulty is that the mind plays tricks and, uh, in trying to deal with this, it does the very same thing again. You see that... Uh, uh, of course, of course. So, he, so, let's come back. Is the mind, which is so full of knowledge, self-importance, self-contradiction and all the rest of it, that mind, the human mind, has come to a point where it finds itself psychologically that it is immo- it can't move. There's nowhere to move. Yeah. So what? What? What would I say to a person who has come to that point? I wonder if I'm moving along or we're not. Well, I think it's beginning to focus the question. You see that. Uh, I mean, if the so, person will go ahead. I come to you. I'm full of this confusion, anxiety, and sense of despair, not only in facing what the world is, and also in myself. I I come to that point, mm-hmm. and I want to break through it, so it becomes a problem to me. Yes. Well, then we're back. It was an attempt to become again. You see. Yes, that's what I want to get at. So, is that the root of all this? This desire to become. Yes. Well, it must be close to the root. That that it, it keeps on coming in without notice. You see, the inattention is such that you. Say I'm looking at my problem, and uh, that is, uh, my problem is uh, always becoming, and so I say I want to stop becoming, which again is inattention. Which again becomes a problem. Well, so, yes, that's right. So, how do I regard or look without the movement of becoming at this whole complex issue of myself? Well, it seems one has to look at the whole. You see that we, are, we, we did not look at the whole of, of becoming when, when you said, well, how can I pay attention? Uh, part of it seemed to slip out and uh, uh, became the observer. Right? I mean, oh, so, look, becoming has been the curse of this, psychologically curse. Like a, man, a poor man wants to be rich and a rich man wants to be richer. And it's this movement of all the time becoming, becoming, both outwardly and inwardly. And though it brings great deal of pain 
and some, sometimes pleasure, this becoming, this sense of becoming, fulfilling, uh, achieving psychologically, has made my life into a all that is. Now I realize that, but I can't stop it. Yes, but it, the one thing is, why can't I stop it? That let's go into that a little bit. Yeah. You see, partly it is because I've always concerned in becoming that there is a reward at the end of it. And I'm always avoiding pain, punishment and reward. On that, in that um, cycle I'm caught. That's probably one of the reasons why the mind keeps on uh, trying to become something. And the other, perhaps, is deep-rooted anxiety, fear. If I don't become, be something, I am lost, and I am uncertain, insecure. So, the mind has accepted these mm, illusions, and says, "I." I cannot end that. Yeah, but then why doesn't the mind end? When it, you see, or else do we have to go into the question of saying that uh, that there is no meaning to these illusions? You see that. How do you convince me of an illu- of that I am caught in an illusion? You can't, unless I see it myself. I cannot see it because my illusion is so strong. Yeah. That illusion has been nurtured, cultivated um, by the by religion, by uh, fam and so on and so on. It is so deeply rooted in my that I refuse to let that go. Well then it seems impossible. That that is what is happening. Mm-hmm. That is what is taking place with large number of people. They say, I want to do this, but I cannot do it. Now, given that situation, what is, what is one to do? Is it explanations, logic, all the various contradictions in logic and so on and so forth, will that help him? Obviously not. Well, not if they, you know, because it all gets absorbed into the structure. It obviously not. Mm-hmm. So what, what is the next thing? Well, I, I would question, you see, if he says, I want to change, but, you see, there's also the wish not to change, you see. Oh, there's, of course, that's a... <laughs> that's in there. That's of course, that's the man who says, I want to change, is all, has also, in back of his mind, really, why should I change? Mm. That, that goes, they go together. Yeah, so that then you say you've got a contradiction, right? That's what I mean, contradiction. I've lived in this contradiction, I've accepted this contradiction. You say, why should I have accepted it? You see, that's a because that's habit. Yeah, but I meant that, see, the mind, when healthy, will not accept a contradiction. But our mind isn't healthy. Yes, that's <laughs> Our minds are so diseased, mm-hmm. so corrupt, so confused, that we, even though you point out all the dangers of this, it refuses to see. So, how do we, suppose I am a man in that position, how do we help him to see clearly the danger of becoming, let's put it that way, psychologically becoming? Which implies identification with a nation, with all that business. Or holding to opinions. Opinions, mm, beliefs. Mm. I, I've had an experience, I, it gives me tremendous satisfaction, I'm going to hold on to it. I've had knowledge, you know, all that. 
how do you help me, such a person, to be free of all this? Your words, your explanations, your logic, everything says quite right, but I haven't, I can't move out of that. I wonder if there is another factor, another way of communication, which isn't based on words, knowledge, explanations, and uh, reward. Is there another way of communicating? Which we're talking at table yeah. for a big moment. See, that in that too there is a danger. I think there is, I'm sure there is, a way of communicating which is not verbal, which is not uh, analytical, logical, which doesn't mean lack of sanity, but I'm sure there is another way. No, well, perhaps there is. I, mean, it's just, huh? I say perhaps there is. Now, how do you communicate with me, who's caught in this trap, non-verbally, so that I, I grasp it inst- deeply, that breaks away everything else. You follow? How do, is there such a communication? My mind has always communicated with another, with words with explanations, with logic, with analysis, either compulsive or very suggestive, mm-hmm. and so on. So my mind is in that, has been caught in all that. There must be another element which breaks through all that. Otherwise, I'm, it's impossible. Yes, yeah, so it will break through the inability to listen. Is it? Right? Yes. In a, inability to listen, in a, in a ability to observe, to hear, and so on. There must be a different method. You see, I met a man once, or oh, many men, who have been to a place with certain saint, and in that, in his company, they say, all our problems are resolved. Just me. And when they go back to their life, Mm -hmm. back to the whole game. Yes, well, there was no intelligence in there, you see. No, you see the danger, that man, that saint, being quiet, non-verbal, uh, in his very presence, they feel quiet. You follow what I'm saying? And they, f- and they feel their problems are resolved. No, but it's still from the outside. I mean, of course, that just <coughs> uh, still it's like, of course it is like going to church, and uh, in a good ancient church or uh, cathedral, you feel extraordinarily quiet. It is the atmosphere, it is the uh, structure, the you know, all that. The very atmosphere makes you be quiet. Yeah, well, it communicates what is meant by quietness, I think. You know, that it, that it gets across the communication, which is non-verbal. No, no, but that's not very deep, though. No, no, that's not, that's, that's, that's nothing. It's really it's like incense. 
Yeah, it's superficial. <laughs> yes, it? utterly superficial. Like yeah. incense, it mm-hmm. evaporates. Mm-hmm. So we push all that aside. Then what have we left? Not an outside agency. God or some saviour, push all that aside, and what have I left? What is there that will, that will, that can be communicated, which will break through the walls which human beings have built for themselves? As we said, sir, that at lunch table a couple of hours ago, is it love? Because that word is corrupted, loaded, it become dirty. But <coughs> cleansing that word is that the factor that will break through all this clever, analytical, uh, all that. Is that the element that's lacking? Well, we have to discuss that. You see, there maybe, see, people are somewhat chary of this whole word. Oh, I'm scary beyond words. Yeah, but, uh, and therefore, as, they, as people resist listening, they will resist love too, you see. And, um, of course, uh, course. That's why I'm just... I said it's rather a risky word. But, uh, but we were saying the other day also that love uh, contains intelligence. Of course. And, uh, well, which is care as well, and that uh, if we meant by love that energy which is also contains intelligence Intelli- and care. of course, and that. that we went through, we talked yes. about the other day. So that may make now, more sense now, if we wait a minute. You, you have that quality, and I am, I am caught in my misery, my anxiety and so on, and you are trying to penetrate with that intelligence, this mass of darkness. <laughs> mm-hmm. How will you do it? Will that add? If not, I am, we, we human beings are lost. Mm-hmm. You follow? Yeah. Therefore they have invented Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, they love you. You follow? Mm-hmm which has become so utterly meaningless, superficial and nonsensical. So what shall I do? I think that is the factor, sir. Attention Perception, intelligence, and love. <laughs> you bring it to me, and I am incapable of receiving it. And I say, oh, it sounds nice, I feel it, but I can't hold it. I can't hold it because. The moment I go outside this room, I'm lost. Well, that, that really is the problem that... Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> That's the real problem. Hmm. Is love something outside? Well, you want something? Like a saviour is outside, and heaven is outside, and all that stuff. 
But is love something, I'm using that word very carefully, something outside of me? Would you bring to me? Would you awaken in me? Would you give me as a gift? Or it is Or it is in my in my darkness, in my illusion and suffering, is is there that quality? Obviously not. Can't be. Yes, then where is it, you see that? Yeah, that just it. It is, it must be there. Now, wait a minute. It is not, love is not yours or mine. It's not personal. It's not uh, something uh, that belongs to a person and doesn't belong to it. Is, it love is there. Well, yeah, there. Let's, uh, I mean, that's an important point then. You see, like in one of the discussions, you were saying that isolation does not belong to any person. You see, that yes, sir. It's, it's something that everybody can look at. Yes. Yes. And, uh, Whereas we tend to think of isolation as my personal problem. You see. No, no, no. Of course not. But I it's mean, a common, common ground for all. That may be a clue, you see, because yes. you see, somebody is looking for love and he's saying, this must be my love. You see, oh. you've got it and I haven't. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the way we're thinking. No, no. It's not. It is, I mean, intelligence is not personal. But again, it goes contrary to the whole of our thinking, you see. I know. Everybody I know. says this person is intelligent, that one is not. No. Right? And saying, if I have like intelligence, I must acquire it for myself. Right? <laughs> of course. Uh, but uh, so th- th- this may be one of the barriers to the whole thing that people that behind that the, the behind the ordinary everyday thought there is a deeper thought of mankind, which is that these qualities that we're all divided, and these various qualities either belong to us or don't belong to us. Quite, quite. And then we it's, compare. It's, it's a fragmented mind that invents all this. Yes, well, it has all been invented, but now we have picked it up verbally and non-verbally from childhood and by implication. Implication, quite. And therefore, it, it pervades, it is at the ground of our thoughts, you see, of all our perceptions. And, and so this has to be questioned, you see. No. Uh, we have questioned. Yes. I mean, we have questioned that... <coughs> Grief is not my grief. Grief is human. Yes, not. But how are people to see that? Because a person caught in grief feels that it's his grief. You see. <laughs> I mean, that, doesn't that seem right? Yes, sir. I think it is because partly of our education, partly our society tradition. But it's also implicit in our whole way of in thinking. The whole way of thinking. Quite right. So, we but then we back. have to jump out of that. You see, yes. But jump out of that becomes a problem, Mm. and then what am I to do? But perhaps we can see that love is not personal, love does not belong to anybody any more than any other quality does. Earth is not uh, English Earth or French Earth, Earth is Earth. You see, I was thinking of an example in physics that, you see, if if a scientist or chemist is studying an element such as sodium, you see, it's not that he studies his sodium and somebody else studies (laughs) his sodium. (laughs) (laughs) And they somehow compare notes. Quite, quite, quite. Sodium is sodium. Sodium is sodium (laughs) universally. Yes. And if we have to say love is love universally, right? Yes. But you see, my mind refuses to see that mm. because I am so terribly personal, mm-hmm. terribly me and my problems and all that. I refuse to let that go. When you say sodium is sodium, it's very simple. I can see that. Yeah. But when you say to me, grief is common to all of us, so it is... It's the same grief. Is, the sodium is grief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you see, it took a very... I mean, this can't be done with time, but it took quite a while for mankind to realize that sodium is sodium, you see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, I mean, what all... That's what I want to find out, sir. Is love something that's common to all of us? 
Well, insofar as it exists, it has to be common, you see. Of course, of course. It may not exist, but if it does, it has to be that I'm way. I'm not sure it does not exist. It may, yes, right. Like compassion yeah. is not, I am compassionate. Mm. Compassion is there, except is something not me, compassion. Yeah, well, if we say compassion is the same as the sodium, it's universal. It's universal. It's, it's, and every person's compassion is the same. Right? And compassion, love and intelligence. Mm -hmm. You can't so be compassionate without intelligence. Yes. So we say intelligence is universal too. That uh, uh, obviously. But uh, see, we have methods of testing the intelligence of particular people. <laughs> oh no! <And. laughs> but it, that's all part of the thing that's getting in the way. Eh? Part of this divisive, fragmentary way of thinking, mm -hmm. and thinking is fragmentary. So I'm. <laughs> yes, although there may be a holistic thinking, we are not yet in it enough. Yes. I think holist then holistic thinking is not thinking, no. it's some other It's some other activity, other fact. but we haven't got into it yet. Yeah. See, if love is common to all of us, why am I blind to it? Well, I think partly the mind boggles at or just refuses to consider such a fantastic change of uh, concept, of way of, of looking. But it? you said, no, said, sir, sodium is sodium. Yeah, but people feel uneasy about transferring. You see, <laughs> you've got a lot of evidence for that, uh, you know, in uh, all sorts of experiments, you know, that built that I up. Mean, no, I mean, salt is salt, yeah. whether it's in English salt or... <laughs> yeah. But, but you see, that was built up through a lot of work and experience. Now, we can't do that here, you see, with love, right? Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't love isn't the, knowledge. You can't go into the laboratory and prove that love is love. <laughs> <No. laughs> Why does one's mind refuse to accept a very obvious factor? Why? Is it the fear of letting my old value standards of being all that to let go, but again, you follow? <laughs> well, I, I think it's probably something deeper, you know, that it's hard to get pinned down, but it isn't any of those simple things. I mean, I mean that's partial explanations. Uh, that's superficial explanation. Yeah. I know that. Is, so, is the deep-rooted anxiety to or the longing to be totally secure. But that again is based on fragmentation. Of course, of course, of course. If we accept that we are fragmented, we will inevitably want to be totally secure, right? Uh, because, you know, being fragmented, you're always in danger. So is that the root of it? Mm -hmm. This urge, this demand, this longing to be totally secure in my relationship with everything, to be certain. Yeah, but even so, you could say, that in some way, you've often said that that could be reasonable in the sense that you say that the search for security is, that the real security is found in nothingness, is what you said. Of course, in nothingness, the but, but complete see, security. See, it's not the demand for security which is wrong, but the demand that the fragment be secure. <laughs> That fragment cannot possibly be secure. Right? Let's say, like, like uh, each country trying to be secure is yeah, not secure. But perfect, complete security could be achieved if all the countries got together. Of course, of course. Uh, no tribalism, of course yeah. there would be. So I think it's not, see, the way you put it, it sounds as if we should live inter eternally in insecurity, you see. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. That, we made that very clear. That, yeah, yeah. We made that very clear. That is, uh, it makes sense to ask for security, but we're going about it the wrong way. I mean, Yes, that's right. How do you convey that love is universal, not personal, to a man who has lived completely in the narrow groove of personal achievement? Well then, it seems, you know, the first point is, will he question his narrow, per, his person, you know, his unique personality, right? 
They question it, sir. I've discussed this so much. Yeah. They question it, they see the logic of it, they see the illogic of all this, mm-hmm. and yet... She curiously, people who have been very serious in these matters, have tried to find the wholeness of life through starvation, mm-hmm. through um, torture, through you know, every kind of way. They haven't. They imagine they have. Yeah, that's again a... I mean, you can't uh, apprehend or perceive or be the whole through torture. Torture includes discipline, all the rest of it, and all that. So what shall we do? I have a brother who refuses to see all this. And as I like him, as I've lived with him, I have great affection for him. I want to I want him to move out of it. And I've and I've tried to I have tried to communicate with him verbally and sometimes non verbally by a gesture, by a look, but all this is still from the outside. And perhaps that is the reason why he resists. If I can, if I be my brother, whom I have great affection, if I can help him, or I won't use the word help, point out that in himself this flame can be awakened. Now, which means he must listen to me yeah, well, then. back again. But my brother refuses to listen. See, it seems that there are some uh, actions that are not possible. That if a person is caught in a certain uh, thought, such as fragmentation, then he can't change it because there are a lot of other thoughts behind it, of course, of course. that he doesn't know. You see, he's not actually free to take an action there because of the whole structure of thought that holds him. Now, see, we have to find some place where he is free to act, to move, which is not controlled by the conditioning. So, how do I... I will use the word help with a great caution. Help my brother. He knows I, I, he knows my affection for him. He's aware of my uh, all the rest of it. <coughs> what is the root of all this? We said becoming all, all that <coughs> is verbal. All that is can be explained in ten different ways, <coughs> the cause, the effect, and all the rest of it. After explaining all this, he says, you have left me where I am. And my intelligence, my affection, love system says, I can't let him go. You follow me? I can't say, well, go to hell and move on. I can't let him go. Which means, am I putting pressure on him? I'm not putting any kind of pressure, any kind of reward, none of that. 
I, I can't, my, I, my responsibility is I can't let another human being go. It's not the responsibility of duty and all that kind of filthy stuff, but it's the responsibility of intelligence who says all that. Well, that's clear that uh, you know the whole thing would have no meaning if you would let him go. Oh, mm. <laughs> then it would be going back into frustration. Oh, no. <laughs> so, sir, so, you know, there is a tradition in India and probably in Tibet and all that. There is the called Maitreya Buddha, who took a vow that he would not become the ultimate Buddha till human beings till he has liberated human beings to all together. Yeah. See the tradition hasn't changed anything. How can I, how can one, if he has that intelligence, that compassion, that love, which is not of the country or person or <coughs> idea of the Saviour, all that nonsense, but has that purity of that, can that be transmitted to another? or? living with him, talking to him. You see, it all becomes mechanical. <laughs> now, would you say this has never really been solved, this question? I should think so, sir. That's right. But we must solve it. Hmm. You follow? It has not been solved, but my our intelligence says solve it. No, I think intelligence doesn't say solve it. Intelligence says these are the facts. And perhaps some will capture it. What can what? Hmm. Well, it seems to me that, that so that there are really two factors, and that one is the preparation by reason to show that it all means meaning. Means actually mean. But then from there, uh, possibly some will capture. We have done that, sir. You, you've started telling me all this. You laid the map out very clearly. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it very clearly, where all the rivers, the, the conflicts, the misery, the confusion, the insecurity, the becoming, all that's very, very, very clear. At the end of the ch chapter, I am back at the beginning. Or I've got a glimpse of it, and that becomes my craving mm -hmm. to capture that glimpse and hold on to it and not lose it. Then that becomes a memory. You follow? All the nightmare begins. Well, 
Well, in, yeah, sorry, in your showing me the map very clearly, you've also pointed out to me something much deeper than that, which is love. And I And by your person, by your reasoning, by your logic, I am, I am groping, seeking after that. But the weight of my body, my brain, my tradition, all that draws me back. So it's a constant battle. You follow, sir? And I think the whole thing is so wrong. What's wrong? Hmm? Which whole thing? The way we are living, oh, the, yes, of course, the yes. whole thing is so wrong. Uh, well, I think many people must see that by now. <laughs> <laughs> At least a fair number. As we remember, we were talking once in Rohai, where the man has taken a wrong turn. Mm. entered into a valley where there is no escape. That can't be said, that's too depressing, too, <laughs> too appalling. To well, talk. but still, you know, I think some people might object if you say it. The mere fact that it's appalling does not make it untrue. I mean, I think you'd have to, you know, Say that some stronger reason why you feel that to be untrue. Oh yes. I mean, just that do you perceive in human nature some possibility of a real change? Of course, sir. otherwise it would be there would be meaningless. Um, monkeys, uh, yeah. machines. Yeah. You see, and that faculty to radical change is attributed to some outside agency, and therefore we look to that and get lost in that. If we don't look to anybody and be completely f free from all that, that solitude is common to all of us. I don't know if I... Yes. Uh, yeah. It's not an isolation, it is an obvious fact that when you see all this and say, this is so ugly, unreal, so stupid, you, be, you are naturally solid. You are naturally alone. Eh? alone. And that sense of aloneness which you have, is common. Yeah. Yes, of course, uh, the, the, the ordinary sense of loneliness is the sense of uh, each person feels it's his of own course, loneliness. Of and, uh, loneliness uh, is not solitude, no. not a loneliness. Good Lord. But I think one could say that all the fundamental things are universal, that they're. Uh, 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 and therefore, you're saying that, we, that when the mind goes deep, it comes into something universal. Universal, that's right. Or what you call it, absolutely foreign. Yeah. Uh, that, and that is the pro to make the mind go very, very deeply into yes. itself. Yes. Now that was one thing that occurred to me. You see, uh, which may that see when we start with that particular problem, it's very shallow. Now, then we go to something more general. Yes. You, know, you see, the word general has an interesting. The same root is to generate. You see. I generate, of course. And to the genus is a common generation. So as you go to something more general, you're going to the deep. That's right, which is generated. Yes. That's right. Uh, now, then going from that to still further, <laughs> the general is still limited because it's thought, right? Thought, quite right. But, sir, to, to go so profoundly, huh, it requires tremendous, not only courage, but the sense of constant pursuing the same stream. Yes, well, I think you may have called that, would you say, uh, that's not quite the right, the diligence, that's still too limited, right? Yes, diligence is too limited. Too too. Limited. 
Yeah. I mean, that goes with a religious mind in the sense mm. that it's, it's diligent in its action, mm-hmm. in its thoughts, in its activities and so on. But that is still limited. Mm. I think that's right, sir. If the mind can go from the particular to the general, and from the general well, to, the m- ab- to the absolute, to the universe, move right. away from that. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you see, many people would say, "I'm just uh, that you know that's all very abstract and has nothing to do with daily life." Well, that's see? most practical. I know that. That's <laughs> it is the most practical thing. Not uh, it's an abstraction. Yes, in fact, it's the particular that's the abstraction. Uh, uh, yeah, particular is the most abstract. dangerous. It's also the most abstract uh, because you yes. can only get to the particular by abstracting from the of whole. Of course, right? of course, yes. <laughs> Uh, but I think that may be part of it. You see, that people feel, you know, we want something that really affects us in daily life. We just don't want to be, uh, get ourselves lost in talking, you see. Now, therefore, they say all these vaporous generalities don't interest us. So, uh, these are abstractions. They're abstractions, so and we are getting into the real solid, concrete facts of daily life. <laughs> daily life. <laughs> now, I mean, it's true that we must, it must work in daily life, but you cannot daily life does not contain the solution of its problems. No. Uh, but if it doesn't Daily work, life is the general life. The general and the particular. And the particular. Yeah. But, see, uh, the problems which arise in daily life cannot be solved there, that, that is the human problems. That's right, sir. And from the particular move to the general, from the general move away still deeper, and <coughs> There, perhaps, is this, this purity of that thing called compassion, love and intelligence. But that means giving your mind to this, huh? your heart, your mind, your whole being must be involved in this. Well, you better stop for a first part. <laughs> Sorry, we've gone on for a long. Have we reached somewhere? I think so. I think so.